So today we're going to be taking a regular piece of 2 inch PVC pipe. We're going to make an adapter where you can go from that over to a 2.5 inch shop vac hose. Not so sure that they make one of these, but they are super easy to make and all you need is one tool. So before we make the fittings, I want to go over my layout and show y'all how I've got mine situated. Maybe you'll get some valuable information out of it. And you got to remember, everybody's shop is going to be different. It's probably going to cost you somewhat different than it does me because it's going to depend on what kind of tools you're hooking up, how many you're hooking up, and the size shop that you have. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get started uh, on the right side of the shop and we're using a six horsepower craftsman shop vac on this system uh it seems to work pretty good it's actually about 12 or 13 years old and i've never had a problem out of it then we got a dust cyclone that i had bought off ebay the bad thing about this purchase is it costed 16 dollars but then it didn't have any uh fittings that connected your shop vac hose so we had to custom make one for that then it comes over, I guess you could say, to the main trunk line. We got an, a, a custom adapter we made. Then we got a, a long T, I think is what it's called, that's gonna go into this two inch trunk. Then when you get over to the corner, I actually use 245s to try to ease that curve. So hopefully we don't lose any suction in that area. Then we come over to, I believe this fitting is called a Y. Now this is gonna go down to a blast gate that is going to run the sanding station. Probably the 12 inch disc ander is going to be the only one hooked to that. Then we come back up to the trunk line. Now this is the blast gate that is going to go to the table saw. That'll probably be uh, in the own position most of the time. That tool was used probably more than any other tool in the shop that's going to be hooked to this. Then you go on down and you come up to a 45 degree elbow that's going to kind of soften that curve into that shop back hose and then it's going to plug into the table saw all right y'all so that's the right side of the shop uh, and i'm going to show you all the other side and then we will get on to making these couplings so for the left side of the shop probably the tool that i wanted to hook to this the most is a planer uh, it did come with some obstacles because it pulls out from the miter saw station so there's not uh, a way that you can leave the hose hooked up to it all the time so that's something that I've been trying to figure out over time and really I didn't come up with nothing until I started laying this out so with that being said we start off with the dust cyclone on this side goes up to the main trunk line we got an adapter that we made we got the long T then we go up to 245 degree angles to ease that curve over to another long T and that goes down to a blast gate now that's going to operate the floor sweep that should come in pretty handy when we're cleaning up then we are over to a Y and that's going to go down to another blast gate and a 45 degree angle fitting that's going to come into a custom fitting that we made and that's going to go over to the band so then going back up to the trunk line, we got a, another blast gate. This particular blast gate is going to operate the line that's going to go to the planer. So we're going around the corner, uh, 245 degree couplings uh, for that corner. Then we come on over behind the drill press. We got another 45 degree coupling and a custom uh, coupling that's going to hook another shop back hose over to the planer. Now I did not hook the drill press or the isolating sander to this because I do not use them a lot and if I do I can just hook a hose into that and clean those up pretty easy. So anyhow that's the left side of the shop. Uh, before we're done with this video we are going to run the planer and just see how that works out. This particular planer, the Dewalt 735, has a built-in blower or dust extractor, whatever you want to call it, and that will help push that uh, dust through the system. So anyhow, with that being said, we'll go ahead and show y'all how to make these fittings that goes from a shop vac hose to your two inch PVC. So to make these custom fittings, you are gonna need a piece of regular two inch PVC pipe. 
and I cut mine about five or six inches long and I take and clamp my vice grips onto it. Now using this heat gun, it's gonna make this pipe a little hot, so that's why I'm using the vice grips. Now you're just gonna heat this pipe all the way around. And the main thing you're trying to do is make this pipe kind of flexible. That way when you are trying to mold it and shape it, it will uh, take to that shape pretty easy. So you just keep going around it. It's gonna take a few minutes to do this. So. But once you get it hot enough, it will fit in that pipe pretty easy. You might want to hit the inside of it just a little bit. Now when you're doing that, you're going to really realize why you're holding it with a vice grip because it's going to, the heat gun's going to throw out a pretty good bit of heat. So anyhow, you just keep heating it up. And the good thing about this, it heats to the exact size of the pipe. You see that, it's getting kind of flexible. So we're going to take our pipe, we're going to work that pipe inside of it. You'll see how it just goes right up in there. Now, if you want it to go up in there a little bit further, then once you get that pipe in there, you just heat up the PVC pipe right above where that coupling is going and you'll be able to see it with the indentions. Just heat that up and then you'll be able to slide that pipe on up in there a little bit more. Then when you get it to where you want it, just leave the pipe in it for a few minutes. You want to let this cool off so it stays to the shape of the shop vac hose. And you can kind of move it around a little bit so it don't stick. I've never had one of these stick, but I'm sure if it's hot enough, it might want to try. So that looks like somewhere around an inch and a half or so, maybe inch and three quarters. And the thing on the disc sander, which is what we're making this for, uh, this end of the hose that's going in the disc sander is going to also have to be heated up uh, so we can get that in there because this is just a tad too big for that. So we're going to let this cool off a little bit and then we'll heat this end up and I'll show y'all fitting it into the disc sander. All right, so we're gonna let that sit a minute and then we'll come back and finish this one off. So now we're gonna heat this other end up so it will fit in the port on the sander. Now, actually we gotta make this a little bit smaller. So we're gonna do the same thing on it. Try to heat all the way around the pipe and even them out. And I just take the end of the heat gun and press on the pipe every once in a while to see if it's getting kind of flexible. And then go on the inside of it just a little bit. Should help it out some. And that should be enough. We're going to go ahead and try to fit it in here. Now this particular sander is a little rough on the inside of that port, so I'm going to try to keep it turning so it don't mold to the exact shape of it. The good thing about these fittings, a 10 foot piece of pipe I think cost 10 or 11 dollars and you can get a lot of fittings out of one pipe, so they cost almost nothing. All right, so that's the end that goes in that. We just want to make sure it's going to stay to that shape. So we actually use the black pipe to mold this end that the pipe's going to go in. 
and we're gonna actually use this gray pipe. And I don't know where I got this gray pipe from, but using that black one gives it the right diameter so this gray pipe will fit up in with no problem. So anyhow, we can go on and fit those together. Push that up in there snug. And we'll straighten the sander up. And hook this in to the other one that goes to the blast gate. And it should be ready. I might have to cut that off a little bit, make it a little bit shorter. But anyhow, we will adjust the length of that as we're using this. So hopefully we can get it right the first time. So before we hook the planer up to it and check that out, I was going to go over the tools that I use. Now this is pretty much everything except for my drill and driver. Uh, one of the things was the vice grips. This helps out when you're holding your coupling that you're going to make when you're using this heat gun. Now this can come from Home Depot. I think you can also get it from Harbor Freight, probably save a few dollars. Uh, this is something that you're not going to use all the time. And then your plumbing strap. I decided to use plastic. You can also use metal if you have it. Um, then the cutters. Now this particular cutter I didn't use on this. This is cut up to an inch and five eighths. I've had this in a while. It works really good. I bought this one for this project. I think I cut two or three pieces and then started using my miter saw. The problem with it was you get about halfway through it or so and then just snap it in two. And the thing about that pipe is it's big enough that it's going to flex a little bit and maybe that's where that problem was coming in. Uh, and then just my tape measure. That's pretty much it on that. Now what I do use with my shop vac, I've got this remote that goes to a outlet that just plugs into your outlet, then your shop vac plugs into that and it makes it remote. Keep that probably located around the miter saw. That's kind of a central part of the shop. Should be pretty convenient there. So anyhow, with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and hook the planer up to it, check that out and see how it works. So I was going to show y'all what the base of the planer or the bed of the planer looked like with the shop vac hooked to it. Now there is a little bit of sawdust on there just a tad on the floor but for the biggest part I think it took care of it. The good thing about this one is the 735 has that blower in it that will actually help it get to the cyclone. Uh, so if that pipe uh, is a good tray. It's almost as far out as my table saw, so that'll kind of help push that uh, sawdust on in because the planer is going to create a lot. But anyhow, uh, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. I hope y'all got some useful information out of it. I think I'm going to enjoy the the setup that I've got. Maybe we'll do a review later on just to kind of see how the tools is performing with this. It's going to take a good bit of use, I think, to really get a good feel of how it's going to do. But uh, I think I'm going to enjoy it. If you got any comments about some of the stuff we've done that I didn't cover or go over, don't forget to leave them in the comment section. If y'all hadn't already subscribed to the channel, don't forget to do that. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button, and I'll see y'all on the next one.